Oh, nowhere in particular, just with mankind's greatest enemy. <laughs> just hanging out with my buddy Aaron Yeager. Long hair, Marley and soldier Aaron Yeager. Mr. Kruger, huh? This is sort of weird, no? Isn't he just like endangering this poor kid? Uh, is Aaron setting up this kid? You know, I'm not the most observant person, but just the fact that he's smiling worries me. You can't smile in the show. I don't know what he's doing here, but I know that it's probably not good. It's not good. What seemed to me like maybe a chance meeting in the last episode now seems like a strategy for, for Aaron, by Aaron, to get this kid to do work for him, which is kind of terrifying. That would be like a new level of darkness in a way. That could potentially be yet another thing for Aaron and Reiner to have conflict over, right? If, if everything they've been through wasn't already enough. This kid, it seems to me, is what made Reiner take the gun out of his mouth. I'm literally in the, in the intro, in the opening song, and I'm already like having a bad time, <laughs> but also a great time. You know, that's how that works in this show. From one hand to another. Huh, a lot of interesting possible meanings. The Tiber family. The wielders of the Warhammer Titan, right? Very curious what that will be. Interesting, how do they get so much power? Warhammer Titan. Warhammer Titan. New character. Oh yeah, could be anyone. <laughs> Place your bets. I mean, I bet it's him. Although it's kind of an obvious guess. Oh, Reiner's Warhammer Titan. More lore? Alright, trying to keep the lore straight. I think they mentioned Hellos before, but I may not have paid attention to it closely enough. There's the Devil of All Earth, and then he's slain? I'm not sure about the chronology, but at some point the Devil of All Earth splits into nine titans. Was that like with its dying breath or something? Little jab there, a little cynical. <laughs> Just like within the walls, right? Yeah. Some trade, some things transcend borders, I guess. It's like, as long as the scouts are the ones dying, who cares? As long as we got our walls. Interesting. What's his name? McGrath? McGath? He has ideals. Is this a warning to this Wilbur guy? Interesting conversation. Very loaded. Very loaded discussion. Do they have an interest in war? Atonement. What exactly is going on? Oh good, I look forward to it. <laughs> Looks like Kenny. What's the truth? <laughs> yeah, so I can't fully understand it, but there's a lot of subtext there, obviously. Seems like this Tiber guy has big plans. It could just be like imperialism, but it seems like there's a little bit more there. I think the parallel is interesting between what they're saying about the Marleyan citizens here and what we've heard in the past about the citizens of the penal colonies within the walls. As long as things are happening away from one's vision, away from one's view, it's easy to turn a blind eye to it. I think there is something very real about that and not necessarily just in the context of war. You know, I think like a lot of times when people think about society and think about the world, they think about it from a perspective of like utopia down, right? Like you compare what is to some perfect vision of the world. And I think there is some beauty and value in that, right? Like it's good to have ideals to aspire to. But there's another half of that too, which is like comparing things to just the absolute worst, you know, or like just base natural state, which in many cases is like chaotic and dangerous and terrible, as the show likes to point out, to certain things being very scarce, certain things being very difficult, natural atrophy in life and in the world. Thinking nature up or reality up, let's say, instills gratitude for what is, for one, but also creates sort of a, a safeguard against rampant idealism, the pursuit of which might actually undo the, the precarious balance that we have, you know? So I think like both both sides are important. And sometimes I think this imbalance of perspective comes from like extreme affluence, you know, or extreme comfort. Because then that comfort, that affluence, that that level of peace starts to feel like a default state of life when really it isn't. And so I like what McGrath said about like putting people on the ground, you know, hearing the, the whiz of bullets. That probably would make people feel really differently about the world in which they live, just as it made the people within the walls feel very different when while Maria was attacked. The peak? 
She's just used to this this form, I guess. All she's missing is a backpack and a basket and and turrets. <laughs> she just likes it. She just likes her role. Minamiko. They're, they're waiting for you. They're ready. There's no way they're just sitting around doing nothing all this time. Just gotta bite your tongue, huh? All day, every day, despite all the sacrifices they make. Careful. Don't count him out. He seems to have found like some kind of renewed passion for what he's doing. A historic feat. I don't know about that. I guess it makes sense when you're like three years old. It was a really great touch, I think, making these kids resemble the, the previous four. The parallel between the previous four and this four is, is obvious, right? But like, this kid looks so much like Berthold, and I feel sad every time I see him. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they're they're pretty evenly weighted at this point among the top brass, you know, like, they both have their accomplishments. Falco won a race, Gabby won a war, you know, it's about the same. It all comes out in the wash. Gabby's maybe just, like, too useful to give a 13-year death sentence. In other words, back off. This is my lane. Uh oh. <laughs> A lot of these guards are like involved in this drama. AKA Mirror Annie. That's very astute from her. There is something theatrical about this whole thing, especially after what we heard from uh, the Zabers or Wilbers or whatever, that guy. So they're in German zones basically everywhere. Wow. Wouldn't count on it. She's no devil. You know, there's something Azula-like about her as well. It really doesn't seem to me like she's a bad kid at all. It's just that she's very bright and she's been given this path to success. And as a naturally bright and talented person, she's going to do very well at that. And then she's going to get praised for that, further reinforcing what she's doing. So basically at this point, as a child, she's a victim of her society and also her own like gifts, you know? And that's how I felt about Azula as well. Like Azula is just like a prodigy kid who got a lot of attention for that and had those talents and those mindsets reinforced. And there's a tragedy to that because it's so naive as you might expect from a kid. Like, she's so smart yet so, like, trapped. And there really doesn't seem to be any hope for her or for the Eldians. Not like this, anyway. Not through their system, because their system is designed to give you hope and then give you nothing. But she's extra vulnerable because it's her whole world. I got my eyes on a, a gaff. I'm hoping for big things from him. It's a very interesting uh, relationship that they have, these two. But he's an Eldian. This is weird. Okay, he's having a moment. I don't know what it is. Something about this is giving me the vibe of instability. <laughs> Oh no, Falco. Oh, bet he has. I'm sure Aaron loves, loves baseball. Should be a fun festival. <laughs> I expect there will be fireworks. Jaeger? Oh, is this his grandfather? Yeah, this is a lot of information. Smart. I expect nothing less from a Jaeger. Yeah, he is putting him in danger. Serious danger. I don't know if Aaron can 
be talked out of doing what he's doing. He lost his son. Oh, he's not a doctor. He's a patient. This is brutal. This whole thing is brutal. You see the characters from so many different directions. For a second, I forgot about that, the Grisha and his father conversation and the whole dog incident. The most recent thing we've seen from the grandfather is like Zeke saving them. But Eren remembers. Eren feels it or has felt it. That took a really dark turn. That was a very compact rug pull right there. I'm scared to find out what's with the baseball. This, this, no. Baseball is not good. It is not good. Worst sport. They join hands with the Marleyan hero, Helos, to overcome the Eldian Empire and bring it into the war. I'm a little bit confused about how much influence they have. McGrath seemed to be implying that Willie Tiber is leading the country in a way, through his influence. But it's bizarre to think that would be the case when the Eldians are so oppressed. Although, it could be, like, story, narrative, or whatever. He's got big plans, Willie Tiber. <laughs> They do everything at the same level of intensity. They're well trained. Pretty good metaphor there. They're working this hard. That was very nice of her. She just potentially saved them. Who is she? Willie's a real charmer. This world is a little bit confusing. They all knew each other as kids, but they're like, they're warring, right? These are people that were, were just fighting the war, no? Which is bizarre in itself. What is their game? Are they doing something else? Is there like another reason for the, these wars? I don't know. I'm probably reading too much into it. Yeah, now we're best of friends. Whoops, this is very glib. This is such a bizarre social engagement. Maybe I'm not high class enough to understand this. <laughs> My peasant brain is struggling. This should be good. And, and harmless. <laughs> I love that's a theater production too. We can like sing and dance about the end of the world. Very ambitious project. So I'm going to save the world, but more importantly, I'm going to give you the best damn show of your life. <laughs> and then, you know, we can, uh, we can bang out some of the details of the world peace stuff. That's who. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one level of intensity. Is this fun? Is this what fun is? Enjoy it. These moments are rare in this world. Oh, no, 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 no. No, this was too happy. This is probably it. I have a feeling this is this is it. It's all downhill from here. Yeah, see? No, don't stop it. Yes, it does. You don't get that in this show without paying for it. You don't get moments of happiness without moments of hellishness. You gotta brace my mind. Prepare my mind for what's coming. But yeah, very interesting episode. Kind of quiet, kind of subtle, no action, but a lot of interesting like world and character stuff building. The Megath Tiber connection is intriguing. Tiber himself is really intriguing. He's a visionary, but he's also obviously disturbed, or he has something going on. He's not not all there. He seems like he's about to bring upon the world a terrible danger. But on the plus side, he has a flair for theater. Then you have Eren like using Falco as a, a pawn or some tool, sending messages and preparing for this this festival, this theatrical date, I guess. It's all gonna coincide. So things are gonna go down in Marley, and I'm guessing very soon, and that's what I guess Gabby was hinting at or foreshadowing. Things are about to change, things are about to go down. This felt like the last meal, you know, the last celebration before the things happen. There are enough pieces in place now, I guess, this season for things to pop off. One of the things I'm really interested to see is what happens with Reiner here, because he doesn't seem to be totally on board. I mean, he's struggling, 
And it seemed like it was Falco and the kids that gave him purpose, but what does that mean exactly? What does he want for them? Just generally speaking, I'm sure he wants them to have a better life, better than what he had, but how do you pull that off? How do you make that for them when you live in this society where you're always being watched and when the kids themselves are buying this so heavily? I don't know. Although I feel like at the speed things are going, things might just happen and Reiner is just sort of there to try to mitigate the damage or just observe the horrors or something like that. From one hand to another is the name of the episode. And I guess there's a couple meanings, like there's the, the letter, right? One hand to another. But there's also a lot of similarities between the show show we've had so far and the show we're still having now with people living in ignorance somewhat willful ignorance at the guiding hand of someone else whether it be a king or this guy Wilbur Tiber and people looking to shape the world through very very questionable means <laughs> I'm scared to go on to the next episode but here we go